Good day. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Well, you're here at Bountiful Market. You're up shopping around, having a good time. Yeah, I came to Edmonton and I stopped by on my way back to my house in Leduc. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, we've been having a long, ongoing conversation about uh, Alberta politics. Yes. So without getting really deep into our conversation, what do you see is happening right now? What does it look like to you in terms of the election? Well, the election seems to be pretty polarized between the UCP and NDP. There seems to be no other party there. Many of the constituencies right now have only two candidates. And um, I, I personally think the UCP will, uh, will win the election. And um, as to how do I see it, like in Alberta, I think that a lot of the voters that are gonna be voting either UCP or NDP are not happy with either of them. They're gonna be voting for the lesser of two evils in a sense. Do you think it's more of a leadership issue? Like, I think people are pretty comfortable with their local candidates, but do you think the indecision's at the leadership level? Well, for sure, the leadership le level, there's, uh, there are concerns. I mean, in the case of Notley, like speaking for myself, um, she had four years where she failed. And um, that's not a subjective, um, assessment that was objective can be objectively measured in the last election i mean in 2019 notley went through an unmitigated disaster because the people of alberta rejected her term as far as uh, danielle smith um all i can say is that um she has um we should we should probably talk about kenny first because really kenny had, was, had a very low popularity in Alberta as well. He was, in a sense, a failure as much as Notley was. I mean, the, the UCP was polling in the 30s, and, um, and that's why then he was replaced by Smith. And Smith brought back up the UCP to the point that right now he's, in, he's polling in the 40s and is uh, slightly leading or, or even. So what can I say? To, uh, I, that's a, it's a long answer here I'm, I'm giving. Like, what about the Alberta Party? For but, real? but they're, they're I, nowhere. Why? Why do you think they? This well, is their, this is their real opportunity. Well, no, exactly. And I think you, you, it's a good point because what I, I wanted to summarize my last question, which okay. was, well, yes, of course, there's concerns on the leadership of both because if Smith was really popular, she should be able with not least bad government, she should be able to be leading by a little bit more. But in all fairness, she has recovered quite a bit. As far as the Alberta Party is nowhere to be found and uh, the Liberal Party is nowhere to be found. Now, there are a couple of parties that I'm hearing are going to be running. Um, I saw an interview in the Western Standard, but I don't know how many candidates, I haven't seen any nominations, but Paul Hinman is resuscitating the Walrose Coalition. So the Walrose Coalition is now a registered party, according to Paul, he said that he registered 50 candidates. So they are an official, it's called Wild Rose Coalition, they are an official party right now, but he said only five or six are going to be running campaigns. So the other ones, I don't know if they are going to even be on the ballot, they, they probably won't. It's just a gimmick to create the party. And then you've got Artur Pavlovsky, who's, um, who's creating right now the Solidarity Movement of Alberta. He's in the process of registering that party, and that party will be an official party. And... Pastor Art has uh, said he's going to be running as a candidate in Calgary Elbow himself. Do, do, do you think that uh, Marita's got a chance in Brooks Medicine Hat for Alberta Party against uh, Danielle Smith? No, because we already saw what happened in the last uh, by election where there were like, it was the NDP and then the candidate you mentioned and Daniel and um, and Daniel really got over 50% of the vote and the Alberta party got they did pretty good but uh, but yeah no they don't have a chance there neither, neither does the NDP in that in that riding in, in in that riding you just mentioned that constituency very strong ideological parties both the NDP and both the UCP do you think that a, a minority government with the Alberta party holding the balance of power would be actually, I don't know if it's possible, but do you think that might be a good solution? 
just to keep keep that. You know, look how look how a minority governments work federally. We've all, we've had what 16 years of minority governments. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, no, 12. Yeah. The only problem is that right now, of the 87 seats, all the polls are showing there's going to be a majority because. Even even if the, the race is tied between UCP and NDP, it will be 44 to 43, but that's the tightest it could get. But no party is anticipated to win a seat. Absolutely nobody. Now, I'm I'm not sure about the polarization. There's two schools of thoughts, and people think, I'm pretty sure there, there is a polarization between the UCP and NDP, but at the same time, I read an article recently in the CBC, not that I may give it too much credence, but they were saying that in the voters' eyes, both parties are seen as appealing to the moderates, and, and they, the NDP has moved to the right, and the UCP to the left, and that right now they are trying to capture that middle ground. Should, should they be the? Uh, shouldn't it be the United Libertarian Party? Is there any conservativeness even in any of the policies that they put forward? No. It's not a conservative. This is not a conser This is not a con no no. This is not a conservative party. Um, this party is doing the same thing as the NDP. Now, like, I mean, their, their rhetoric may be different, but what they are doing is exactly the same. I mean, they are giving handouts to the voters. If we're looking at the UCP right now, they are doing what the NDP would do. I mean, they are giving favors to this or that. They are announcing this rebate, this, this. They are giving money to buy votes. So instead of having... Danielle promised a tax cut, but she would have given the tax cut now for everybody. I, I'm not a fan. That's not a conservative policy to try to appeal to different groups and everything. In the, even the way Danielle is campaigning with the ethnic groups and the, multi, the whole multiculturalism thing and, and everything, I just don't see a difference. This is, this is not a conservative party. She's, she's pro-choice. She also has said nothing about the education in the schools where there are concerns with the sex education in schools as well as the critical race uh, theory teaching and all those other things these are hot potatoes that they don't want to touch even though same thing about the two genders if i were to talk to any albertan here like uh, whether they vote ucp or ndp they will tell me there are two genders i mean I xx chromosome and xy yeah time. only for memory's sake i've got about a minute left do you think that there's anything that could possibly happen to put one of the parties ahead of the other in a dramatic way. Quick, you know, uh, yes, I believe that that right now it comes down to Calgary, and I do believe that, that for example, Danielle building that hockey arena, plus the fact that the finances are very strong for the province, and she's promising all these uh, uh, lower taxes and as well as some some checks uh, going back to the people. I believe that that's gonna go in the favor of the UCP. Thank you for your time today. Look forward to coming back. Excellent. Thanks. Thank Good day. How are you doing? Awesome. Thank you. And your name? Brenda Haig. And what kind of business you got? I actually am a distributor for Prife International. And one of the great products that they have for us distributors is an iTeraCare wand. It's a frequency wand and it vibrates terahertz waves at the same frequency as our cells. So the good cells get stronger and the um, weaker cells are either eliminated um, or basically come up through the skin or whatever. But they boost, it boosts the good energy so that the body gets stronger. That's the, the premise. And so, um, oh, it does so many things. It um, balances the, the lymph and the meridians and uh, oh, I need to go through and that's, can you edit how it? How has it helped you? Um, well, actually I had some edema happening. I got rear-ended a number of years ago. And so I had some edema going on and um, that's virtually gone away. It's excellent for water elimination. So when you want any excess water, basically you just urin urinate mm -hmm. a lot more. Um, that's one of the things. I had bumps, just a few bumps in the back of my head. I didn't know what they were, but after two or three days of wanding, those went away. Um, I had some finicky teeth here, and I know people that have had abscesses. Mine weren't abscesses, but the um, discomfort, and uh, one here and one here, has uh, mitigated. Um, 
I had a, uh, I have a bum knee. I walked off a stair a couple of years ago. And so I'm able to go up and down the stairs a lot more easily. Um, that's me, um, a personal friend of mine. He has stage four prostate cancer. His PSA level had done nothing but go up. And his PSA level went from 41. It's the first time it ever started going down. August 2nd, he got a wand. August 22nd, I called him and he told me he felt fantastic. His skin had improved, but the, he felt so good that he was had just set up an appointment with his um, doctor to get his PSA checked. So on September 8th, he went. On September 10th, he called me and said, I'm ecstatic. He said, the first time ever, my PSA level has gone down and it had gone down by three and a half points. And then it has continued to go down steadily in December, it had dropped another three and a half points. And so um, other stories that I know personally, a gal had liver disease and she was suggested to be on the liver transplant list. And uh, her sister went in and started wanding and drinking the terahertz water. And um, six months later, I don't know exactly when she was discharged from the hospital, but she's at home and off, off the suggested list. And another fellow, 97, he had stage five kidney disease. His daughter wanted him every day for 30 minutes. And um, he went from stage five to stage three. How, how do people get a hold of you? My number is 780-707-2255. My email is loveofall369 at gmail.com, L-O-V-E-O-F-A-L-L -L -L 369 at gmail.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.